Dear Professor Nirmal Surya, we are here in Vienna for the 12th World Congress of Neurorehabilitation organized by the World Federation of Neurorehabilitation. What is your first-hand opinion of the event so far? And have you participated in any previous editions? Okay, so I have been associated with WFNR and WCNR for a long time. 1996, first World Congress in Neurorehab, I was there and presented a paper. And then from 2006, Hong Kong onward, I have been regularly presenting, uh, participating, actively involved. In fact, 2018, the Mumbai, the last physical conference was organized by me. The most successful were more than 2,200 people were there. So what I gather today, after three years of the lockdown, COVID, we can see that there's a buzz. People want to come. People are happy, they're happy to meet. And the so far the discussion, the presentation, I find that all the halls are busy. And it is all about neurotechnology, neuro rehabilitation, newer technology that people have been talking about. And I think in the last three or four years, what are the changes that happened, they have been discussed. So I think this is a change which has come because so many years people have been stuck up lockdown could not travel due to the covid now they are finding it as sort of an outlet and very happy uh, what is the overriding theme of the congress this year from your point of view i feel the theme should be the future technology because what i gather today from the the plenary lectures and other lectures i think we are more focusing on newer technology we're talking about the brain-computer interface. We're talking about the uh, technology, nanotechnology. So I think it is the newer technology in neuro rehab, which we can talk about neuro rehab 2030. From your perspective, what is the role of hybrid multidisciplinary events in developing neurorehabilitation research in practice, and which similar avenues are worth exploring? So I feel that hybrid mode of conference is a norm now. You look at all the conferences which have happened in past one year or six months we have started, whether it was American Academy, European Academy, whichever is American Epilepsy, they're, they're all a hybrid. Hybrid give an opportunity for people who cannot travel because now there is a challenge. Post-COVID, traveling is not easy. The cost is enormous, particularly people who are coming from developing country. They find it hard to travel. The, the air cost, the hotel cost, they are three times or four times. And therefore, hybrid meeting gives an opportunity for people who are really interested in learning to come and learn. It is a great coverage in this way to, to reach all, all the interested Correct. participants. What is the level of access to neurorehabilitation facilities and educational program in Asian countries? Right, so you know in Asia, the, or there are developed countries like Japan, Korea, Hong Kong, and there are many not developed countries or developing countries. So obviously there is a great disparity in the neuro rehab services in this country. There are not many rehab specialists present in the developing country. They are not technologically very, very smart. The robotic and all these newer technology, they are not available in developing country. There are some countries where the neuro rehab is very, very scary, scanty or very few specialists are available. And therefore, it is very important to develop the neuro rehabilitation in Asia. We really need to come out with the plan where we can create more number of neuro rehab expertise, create an education. IFNR and uh, India has been in last lockdown for four years, has been doing a lot of educative program. We have done more than 100 webinar and the people from all over the world has attended. And we know that there is a great need of education and the training. And we will continue to put our effort in this direction. How important is the role of the community in providing a proper long-term follow-up of the stroke patient? So the community and family. So don't forget about the family. So I always been talk about family-based rehabilitation. So now the post-COVID, the whole scenario has changed. Community, family, 
and the tele rehabilitation if you combine all this then particularly for the people who are nuclear family or staying in the metro cities where they don't have a big community together or family together it gives an opportunity to provide long term rehabilitation so mind you the future would be a combination of community based rehabilitation plus minus family based rehabilitation added with tele rehabilitation so if this work we can provide low cost regular therapy even for the stroke patient who cannot afford to go or travel for a long period of time what are the immediate needs of the indian medical system to implement increased awareness and rehabilitation programs for stroke patients so in india we are growing more number of people are getting trained we need to develop low cost rehab centers we need to have systematic training program for the stroke rehabilitation the neurologists need to take a lead there are centers which are highly advanced with rtms tcds but there are centers where nothing is available so we really need to bring a minimum standard therapy and the need of neuropsychologists and the swallowing assessment so we need to gear the stroke specialist to do the assessment of swallowing right on the day one which can prevent lot of complications related to stroke so these are some of the need which i think we need to address more fast how efficient is yoga in reducing the impact of epilepsy in this form of therapy embraced by the patients all right so this is a double blinded trial which we started on yoga and epilepsy one of my patient with epilepsy she is a young girl who does yoga so i told her now you are suffering from epilepsy you do yoga you are better you do the training for other epilepsy patients so we are doing double blinded uh, randomized controlled trial with 50 patients 25 in the epilepsy 25 whose epilepsy is well controlled and we find that yoga helps uh it is overall well being of the patient it may not be directly impacting on the epilepsy and therefore it is very important that you take the medicine you do regular yoga so that it the associated depression stress which can precipitate your attack can be reduced so yoga is not only for epilepsy we have yoga for parkinson disease we have yoga for multiple sclerosis we have yoga for stroke so we have devised certain yogas from indian system which can be used for this disease and we have done the proper study of parkinson disease and yoga and it has helped the parkinson disease patient this is very interesting thank you what could be some national strategies for mediating covid related anxiety in people with epilepsy well see the our study we have done the study on covid and anxiety fortunately and fortunately we did not get many patient with epilepsy to have the covid number one number two when we assessed them on coli 10 pre and post even the before covid their assessment and during the covid and after the covid assessment there was not much change except mild increase in anxiety so i think as long as my patients knew that doctor is available to them i was available throughout the lockdown online or offline their anxiety level was not increased the only challenges came when the medicine was not available because of lockdown the medical shops were stopped closed and they did not have the prescription so that was a challenge so they had a fear to get that attack once the, those things settled down i think they were okay thank you thank you very much for your okay. time and for thank you for the interview and i hope it us. gives an information to the people and they like it thank you very much thank you